If you're like me, you might have a car that isn't the newest and might need the occasional fixeroo. Or if you're actually like me, the very frequent fixeroo. Not to worry though, because I happen to be the fastest wrench wielder in the West. Not the most accurate though. No, I bolted it up backwards. And because of that, I don't shy away from fixing my own shit. Or maybe I just want a fast car, but I can't afford one that's not 10 years old. Either way, hi, I'm Copper Panman, and today I'm going to find a noise in my car that I haven't been able to find for months using my brand new 300 IQ method, all while getting a brand new video to post. Synergy, I get to settle my debilitating OCD down, and you get a hot new guide on how to fix your own whip. The best part is, it's cheap, it's easy, and it should be effective. Hopefully. So without further ado, here's the three-step shitty version of how to fix your own car, the big brain way. Now full disclaimer, my clothes might change a couple times over the course of this video. Don't worry, even though it might look like we are different people, we are in fact the same Michael. The first step to fixing anything is to define the problem. So in my case, that would be that every time I hit the smallest unevenness in the road, the front right of my car turns into an MG42 on D-Day, and it's really annoying. I want it to stop. Now, even though it sounds like it's coming from the right side of the dashboard, I think it's actually coming from the wheel well because the sound is far too intense to be a broken plastic clip. It's gotta be metal on metal. And it makes the sound mainly on lightly rough pavement, not so much on actual bigger bumps. Next up is research. And by that, I mean Google. Now, I always like to start my searches more specific and then work to less specific. So I'll start with things like E90 suspension knocking sounds. If that doesn't find it, I'll move to just BMW knocking sounds. And if that doesn't find it, you know, just suspension knocking sounds in general. What I found after ignoring all the, this has been posted before, why are you posting this responses was essentially a lot of good advice about Jack the car up and then banging, pulling, and prying on everything in sight in the hopes that you find something loose like a ball joint or a sway bar end length or a wheel bearing. None of that worked. But not to worry because I'm 90% logically sure that it's one of these components because they're the only ones that move enough to cause this much of a ruckus. I've already replaced these recently so we can rule those out and specifically what could be wrong is that there could be space in one of these loose or worn ball joints so when the car hits bumps it goes bang bang bang. Now here comes the 300 IQ method. I am going to duct tape an old phone of mine to the windshield and then from it, I will run a lavalier mic from the aux port. Those are an old thing that used to exist. I will run it down the hood into the wheel well, and then I will duct tape it to one of the suspension components in question. I will then run my car down a strip of road that makes the noise, in this case, my mom's driveway. And then I'll repeat that on every other suspension component in question. And the one that is the loudest will be our culprit. It's big brain time or small brain time because this is actually the second time I've tried doing this. The first time I was using a portable recorder of mine that I didn't duct tape down and I promptly proceeded to run it over. I don't have a picture of that because my mom threw it away and rightly so, but here's an artist's depiction I made of what it did look like at the time. So don't do that. Now, full disclaimer, if you're already into cars, you might know that this method isn't completely new. You can already buy kits like this on Amazon that have clips that you clip on to various different parts of your suspension, and then you can listen to it on the inside of your car. I'm sure this is quicker, but there's also two main cons. First, I don't necessarily trust my ears to discern the difference in audio levels, but computers don't lie. And second, microphones that already work in every context already exist, and you can buy them considerably cheaper. Now, after I wrote that, my brother actually brought up the point that I could just borrow a set from AutoZone. That's a good point, so I'm just gonna dismiss it by saying, you know, with the virus and all, it would probably be too dangerous. All right, so I've decided to do the forward control arm first. I've got it wrapped really tight in some electrical tape so that it really, you know, resonates with the part as it is going down the road. I've added enough slack so that it should be able to move freely with the uh, wheel as it turns, and let's just see how this goes. Well, that was anticlimactic, but anyway, I've got the audio in Premiere. I think I know which part it is. Take a listen yourself. So I don't know if you came to the same conclusion as me, but that last one sounded much different, more metallic to me. And so that's what I'm gonna buy, and that is the sway bar links. So I'll see you when those come in. Ta-da! All right, next up, I'm gonna take the wheel off. <laughs> 
All right, both the new sway bar links are installed. The wheels are back on. So let's just see how this drives. Leave it to me to not turn the mic on for the most important part of the video, uh, but it's actually fixed. It sounds like a normal car now, which is surprising because after I did this, I realized that it just as easily could have been the sway bar itself and like a bushing inside because the sway bar happens to be bolted to the sway bar link. So we got lucky this time, but yeah, hell yeah, it's fixed now. So what have we learned today? Well, that's a great question, but you know, here's one thing by using simple facts and logic and an inexpensive mic, you might be able to find a sound that's in your suspension. Not that this should be your go-to method of finding every sound, but just like I was to my high school prom dates, um, it's a last resort that may or may not be so bad. Check back next week when I shittily teach you how to make your own sick beats, and if you're not subscribed, do it! And also, smash the like button, um, and go to all my up past videos, smash the like button on those too, and then share all the videos with everybody that you know. Every single person, doesn't matter if you've only seen them on the street one time, find them, track them down, tell them about Copper Pan Man, because we gotta grow, baby, and I'll see you tomorrow. I mean next week. Don't